There are two approaches to hypnotherapy. There is the uh, meta approach, which is based on Dave Ellman, who says if you can't get your client into hypnosis within the first minute of meeting them, you've got no right calling yourself a hypnotherapist. It's uh, where all the rapids are. You can basically put the body to sleep, get it all to be floppy, loose and correct, and then work with the mind. Then there is the, so that's the direct Dave Ellman approach. It's called the meta model. Then you've got the Milton model, which is based on Milton Erickson. So some wonderful people have come before us who have had very different viewpoints on achieving this state somewhere in between sleeping and waking. Milton Erickson, uh, the Milton model, is more um, what we call embedded commands. So a command is a command, though Milton Erickson and the Ericksonian approach and the Milton model cloaks those commands for to, to bypass the critical factor of the conscious mind. So he might say something like, um, I don't know when you're going to close your eyes, but I know at some point those eyes will close. Now, if I begin to tell you, that, oh, close my eyes now, um, the unconscious gets the message, but the conscious mind thinks, oh, that's nice, I don't have to do anything, I can just do that. So you, the, the reason why commands are important is because your unconscious mind takes commands. That's what it does. It's very direct and straightforward. There's aspects of it that are a bit in the imaginal realm and um, uh, memory which are a bit more fuzzy. But from day to day, your unconscious mind takes orders, takes commands from your consciousness. So you, it's the same mind, but there's different aspects to it, as, as is defined in the book. The very distinct qualities to the unconscious and to the conscious. As you know, as if I pulled my hand away from something quickly, that's my unconscious, and then my conscious wonders why I did it. So there's different qualities to the conscious and unconscious aspects of mind. Though the conscious mind I'm going to make a cup of coffee. So my unconscious mind would then start to fire up the longest, strongest muscles in the body, in the thighs, the gluteus maximus. Then I've got to put my hand here. Then I've got to get out of the chair. And all that. That's done by my unconscious. My conscious mind puts forth the program. My unconscious goes, oh, I'm going to do that. And then I don't even think about how I'm going to get out of this chair. I might groan. <laughs> uh, but I don't think about it. I then start having conversations with people. So these things that we do easily and naturally, we put forward the conscious directive and the unconscious obeys. And usually we don't think about it. Some of those things are wonderful programs, as we call it in NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, like baton twirling or concert, being a concert pianist, um, and some things that the unconscious has taken over by repetitive and heightened states aren't serving us anymore, like the smoking, etc. So if consciously we want to then stop something or start something, that's when we go to see a hypnotherapist if we want to speed up the process. There's a threshold in every human being where we think, enough. You know, people will get to a point where they stop smoking anyway, or they're too ill, or they can't breathe, or whatever, so they'll stop. Something will happen. There's a threshold. Some people will get to that threshold sooner rather than later, and some people just stop all by themselves to take smoking as one thing. You might stop being a concert pianist, arthritis, whatever, they can't physically play the piano, but their mind still knows how. So the conscious mind puts forth the directive and the unconscious fulfills the program. Some of those conscious directives serve the person and some do not. And some are at odds with them. I want to stop this, but I can't because the program is so 
ingrained in the person. Once we've got somebody in that state, we kind of say, hey, unconscious mind, you know this thing you've been doing for so long to help this person? Uh, they w would like to do something different instead. Uh, so you never say stop. You just stop smoking! Why would you do that to yourself? Just stop it! You say, the, the conscious mind would like to experiment with doing something else instead. Are you willing to explore re other ways of behaving and being? And it kind of goes, yes! Nobody's really spoken to me directly before. So, um, everything is a command to the unconscious mind. It usually comes from your consciousness. And this has probably never been explained to you before and maybe won't be explained to you by anybody ever again that this is why stage hypnosis works. A stage hypnotist finds the people who are most compliant to being hypnotized. They do that from these compliance tests that you'll see them do and I can explain later. Once they've got various people who are compliant and willing and wanting to have fun on stage in front of others, they'll do a process whereby they replace the person's conscious mind. The hypnotist puts forward the conscious directive as if the conscious mind of the, the subject had decided to do it. Oh, this stage needs a bit of a clean, I'll go and get a brush. If the person's in the right frame of mind, the and it's all good natured, and the hypnotist, the celebrity hypnotist, makes a suggestion, stage hypnotist is giving them the conscious directive that usually comes from the person's conscious mind. This is normal and natural really that the conscious mind puts forth a directive. I'm a bit thirsty, I'm going to have a sip of my drink. This happens so quickly you don't usually notice. You can, oh, I'm a bit thirsty, so where's my drink? Oh, it's there. And I could keep talking, and I know where my cup is. I go, oh, yeah. <laughs> my unconscious is doing all that, because my conscious mind put forth the directive to pick up the cup. Why can't you deceive yourself to stop smoking? Because the, word, the, the command, stop smoking, has the word smoking in it. Telling ourselves to not do something that the conscious mind distincts is protecting you, uh, relieving your stress, helping you wake up, whatever program you've assigned to it. The unconscious mind goes, oh, you're telling me to do it. I'm telling myself to stop smoking, smoking, smoking. Stop eating chocolate, chocolate, chocolate. The unconscious is, is fired up to do it even more. So then it's not about uh, stopping whatever it is you're trying to stop. It's about starting something else that is a better program.